Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore. Last time we worked on adding a collection system for the smart mineshaft that results in all of the items that we mine being shot up through this water elevator just here, cutting out the need to take our resources all the way back to the surface manually by ourselves. So today I thought it would be a good idea to finish that off with the main storage building for this project. We'll be using an item sorter to sort out 99% of the blocks that you may find underground, ranging from the valuable stuff like diamonds to the more generic blocks like stone and deep slate, as I'll probably want a good supply of that for building in the future. And trust me, you never want to find yourself doing a deep slate heavy project only to find yourself running out of deep slate. This way I can technically gather it without actively trying to gather it, which is pretty good. The only blocks that I can think of that I don't think I'll bother to sort is the wood that you might find in a naturally generated mineshaft. I don't think that's too important to try and gather, so the system that I have in mind simply involves dumping any resources that I might mine into this minecart chest here, and that will take everything to a double hopper collector that will send everything to the surface with the water elevator. Now the hopper chains can be quite slow down here, so the real question is, can I beat my items back to the surface? Yes I can! Oh, this is being very slow actually. Have I broken something somewhere? Oh, there they are. No, everything's fine. It just likes to take its sweet time getting here. <laughs> so the idea is that I hook this elevator to a massive storage system just over here, opposite of our control panel. I think that's going to be the best place to put it. And it might end up extending into the village over here. It depends on how big it ends up being, really. We should probably grab these resources from here, though. Was that everything? I think so. The system works just as planned. Before we start working on building the storage system itself, I need to collect all of the blocks that I want to store in the first place, both for item filters and for displaying which chest is which in the first place. I guess we have to start somewhere, so let's start with the valuable resources that the smart mineshaft was built to mine in the first place. I'm going to want to be able to sort out every variant of these blocks, so the stone and deep slate ores, the raw items, and the compressed blocks for each one as well. I think it'll be worth having each option available to me, and since it's a crystal, I think we'll be including amethyst in this area as well. I don't have any shards though, so I should probably collect a couple of those. Is that a full crystal? Nope. Okay, this is a full crystal, right? Yeah, there we go. That's all I needed from here. I actually have the most valuable things on hand here as well, as I was looking to include most of them in the walls of the smart mineshaft. So luckily, I have access to pretty much everything here. I do need both the ordinary diamonds and two diamond blocks though, so let's just break some of these up. Is this going to be enough? Oh yes, that's actually perfect. So that should be all of the various different ores done. Now I just need to get the other materials, like calcite, smooth basalt, and all of the normal variants of stone. So I've actually gotten quite lucky here. I actually have almost every block that I might have needed on hand here in the smart mineshaft already. That's pretty good. It certainly proves the concept. There are a couple of different things I might need though, like the azalea bushes and drip leaves. And I think we can add glow lichen to the mix as well. I know that we're not likely to ever really harvest it, but it is a block underground that I can collect if I so choose. Now this is a bit of a rogue choice here, I know, but I'm going to include grass blocks into the mineshaft storage system as well. And the reason why is because I might actually come across it if I mine in the coal layer. That layer is at Y96, I believe, and there's a good chance that I might mine out of the side of the cliff walls and gather grass that way. There's also the chance that I might come across Enderman griefing in the smart mineshaft itself, so it'll be a good way of disposing of those blocks. This is also a weird one, but really it's just preparation for the distant future, like 10 years down the line or so. Assuming this world even lasts that long. <laughs> and let's be honest, it probably won't. I'd be very pleasantly surprised if it did though. But let's be real, if our world somehow manages to last that long, at some point, our smart mineshaft is going to become big enough that it extends into the deep dark. It's just that there's not actually any deep dark anywhere near the mineshaft, as those chunks were generated in 1.18, so there isn't actually any skulk anywhere nearby. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have any skulk shriekers here though, so I might need to grab some of those in a minute. But just maybe, one day, the mineshaft will get too big, and I will mine too deep. 
and I will awaken something horrible. Now here's another curveball, obsidian. Now I made a promise to myself that I will never, ever mine another obsidian block. As I've mined enough for a lifetime in this world. <laughs> so this will actually be used for you guys. That way, if you make any obsidian in the Spark Mine Shaft when I release another world download for episode 75, you, you lovely viewers, will be able to mine obsidian and store it in the Smart Mine Shaft. I know, I know. It's something I wouldn't wish on anyone. But the choice is there at least. Ooh, can't forget about the spore blossoms. We're also going to need item frames for the items that I can't physically place in the world. We've got to have some way of displaying them after all. And then finally, cobwebs, because I might be able to obtain a few in the normal Minecraft mineshafts, and there is actually one on the diamond level anyway. So it'll be good to have somewhere I can put those. At this point, I'm fairly certain I have almost everything I might come across in the smart mineshaft. I think I just need the Skull Shriekers. So let's go to the deep dark and get ourselves a Shrieker, shall we? Now the main issue with Skull Shriekers is that I harvested literally every Shrieker within my deep dark ancient city. <laughs> I, I used them all for decoration and whatnot. So I might need to go into a couple of caves nearby. I've got to say though that using them for decoration was definitely a good idea because now I get to do this. Ah! Music to my ears. Ooh! It looks like I have one in the chest. Luckily I only need to find one then. Yeah, I don't see any shriekers anywhere here. I was thankfully very thorough. I'd hate to know that I'd missed a few. This city is supposed to be a safe space for me. Into the caves we go! Come on, warty boy, am I being loud enough for you to come out? Aha! There you are. Oh, I forgot just how spooky this effect is. Let's just pick this up then, and get right out of that cave, because who knows how many of the shriekers there were nearby. <laughs> we have two now though, so that can go into my shulker box. So we have returned to the smart mineshaft. I have business to attend to here. Something to do with storage, I don't know. But here we have every block that I might like to put into our storage system. And I think we're just going to take the long chest hallway approach going in that direction. Whoops, I just remembered one block that I might find underground. Mossy cobblestone. There is, after all, a good chance that at some point I will mine into a spawner. So when that happens, I can keep the mossy cobble. I do have to do some land clearing for this though, we can't have a random hill in our storage hall after all. <laughs> ah, you see that? That's a community mistake right there. I think it would be a good idea to have the ores go in order of the layers that I approach them in. So since the coal is at the top of the mineshaft, that will go first. Then we can have copper, then iron after that, and so on. And then after the ores we can have our various different amethyst geode blocks. Then after the geode section, we can have the skulk that we will likely never ever come across within this smart mineshaft. But you never know. Sometimes expectations can be surprisingly wrong. And since we will never harvest obsidian either, that can go just after the skulk. I think it would be a good idea to add hidden lighting in the form of glowstone under where our chests will go as well. Then on the other side, we will have all of our various different stone blocks that we may come across. Then we can move on to the biome blocks, like dripstone, and also lush caves. We're gonna have crafting tables underneath the chests as well, so it's going to be very practical if need be. Then for our floor, I'd quite like it to look like it has a winding birch path going down the middle of it. Although, this looks way too straight. Don't worry, we can fix that just by removing some of these blocks here. Oh yeah, that's much better. Definitely fits the image that I had in mind. <laughs> So I guess this is going to be where we have our storage hall. I think we've got a good layout here. And I can't wait to slowly fill this place up with all of the resources that I might find in the smart mine shaft below. But first, we're gonna need chests. And wood for chests. I don't really have nearly enough of those and I expect I'm going to need at least four shulkers of logs. <laughs> so while we are going to make a start on the storage building here, we also need to farm up a bunch of wood as well. I hope you enjoy that time lapse everyone, let's go!
And welcome back everyone, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. Not only do we have a huge storage system in place now, but we also have a massive mega build to go with it. We got a lot of building done, didn't we? Anyway, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Whistler! Are you going to consider this your main storage system? Oh come now, don't be silly. This isn't nearly big and grand enough for my main storage system. It can't even store every block in the game. Pathetic. As you can see though, I did use quite a bit of copper in this build, and I think I'm going to let most of it age to its fully oxidised variant, because I love that coppery blue colour. I did wax quite a bit of the copper on the roof though, because I think it'll be good to have the contrasting colour once the rest of it has aged. Also, this is technically an unfinished build. I have a window over there, which I'm totally going to get rid of. And our entrance over here is, uh, well, need I say more? <laughs> Just over here is where I think the money shot is. Oh, for goodness sake, can these phantoms leave me alone for just one second, please? I'm trying to talk about my build here. No, I heard you, creeper. You don't get to creep up on me. My ears are trained like a hawk for every footstep around me. Creeping up on me will never work. My goodness, though. What is with all of the mobs here? <laughs> this is crazy. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted, I was trying to talk about our build here. So this is the money shot. But really, that's because I've been a terrible builder this episode. Do you see it yet? How about now? Yep, I'm an idiot, and somehow managed to build my roofs off centre. So there's definitely going to need to be a lot more work done here in the future. This build is nowhere near finished. But I think I've managed to disguise it quite a bit with how the lower roof juts out like that. That was an idea I had after I had already built the other side though. So let me just show you a comparison there. Yeah. Ouch. Oh, by the way, you can pause single player worlds without bringing up the menu by pressing F3 on the escape key at the same time. It's very handy for times like this where you want to see a build in a certain angle without having to pillar around with blocks and whatnot. Anyway. You can tell that this is the worst side. And yes, I do plan on updating it. We can definitely do better. And there is a reason why the exterior of this build turned out this way. You see, I didn't really have a proper idea in mind. This build was so big that I was kind of just winging it for once. I didn't really have the time to properly, like, test it in creative. Really, the only planning that I had for the exterior of this build is a small wall section like this one over here. That was it. And with that in mind, I think we've done pretty well. There are some definite improvements to be made, but we know where they are, and we can work on that in the future. I mean, of course there are improvements to be made. There's literally a giant hole in the side. <laughs> I can't just leave this here. I do think this would be a good place for a custom nether portal design though. So we might put a big nether portal room here. I'd love to try my hands at doing one of those again. And it would definitely be a good idea to connect the smart mineshaft up to the nether hub. I mean, it takes way too long to get here just by flying ordinarily. And it costs me quite a few rockets. We can't have that. I thought that it would be a great idea to start using the storage system while I was building this thing though. I kept a lot of resources and barrels down below from when I've mined out various different places in the last episode. So this storage hall is already slowly, but surely starting to fill up. I don't think I've sent the basic diamond layer resources up though, so I guess I can show that one to you all at least. I simply grab the contents of a barrel like this one, put it into our minecart chest just here, and then all of those resources makes its way to our storage system. Now you might have noticed that I used diamond blocks in my block palette here. And yes, I did make the difficult choice to be expensive here. I just liked the idea of including them in a block palette with oxidised copper. Unfortunately though, that means that once again I have run out of diamonds. And you can see that pretty easily over here. Where the diamonds just suddenly stop being used. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be like this for too long though. We have a fully functional smart mineshaft system to use now after all. Our water elevator for the storage system is a little exposed at the moment as well. I'm not too sure how I feel about this. I guess it's cool that it's basically a visible pipe that you can watch. But at the same time, I kind of wish that I had incorporated this into the build a little bit more. 
I wonder what else I can do here. We could really do with some more diamonds though, so let's get mining. This layer isn't really done yet, so we'll just go in a straight line for now. Oh great, I've already come across lava. <laughs> it appears that our first ores are redstone. Oh, but here are the diamonds. Beautiful. Are there more? Good, good. I love to see that colour of blue. Well, I had to cut that run a little short as I ran out of torches. What kind of idiot goes mining without torches? I'm such a fool. Okay, is this going to be enough? Uh oh, whoa, hold your horses, Whistler. That's way too many. <laughs> I guess I can put most of these back into my light box. So, here we go again. Give me diamonds, please. Ah, this is a nice surprise. I do love me some gold. I may have a mega gold farm, but I can't get ores or raw blocks from that. I think it's going to be worthwhile for me to collect these. Ha ha, diamonds! I love to see them. Ah, there we go. Even more for me. Oh, that's a big lava pool. But we've got yet even more diamonds. We'll just collect those two. I think that'll be enough mining for now. So let's see how many diamond blocks we can get out of 16 diamond ores. Although, this is actually a fantastic opportunity to use the smart mineshaft. Yeah, I think we'll just send all of these resources up from here. Now give me the diamonds. Wait, where are the diamonds? Oh, I remember. The item filters up above haven't completely filled up yet. We only put one ore in there. <laughs> I do actually have some of the old regular stone diamond ores here as well that I could potentially break down and craft into blocks. But here's the thing. As far as I'm concerned, stone diamond ores are kind of rare now. So I think it'll be a good idea to keep these as they are. Oh hey, look at that. I can watch the system at work. I actually really quite need those diamond ores I just gathered though. <laughs> Let's just steal it then from the filter here. Okay, so we've got 20 in the hopper, 19 going spare. I wonder how many we can get out of that. Oh yeah, Fortune is doing its job well. Wow, we got 48 diamonds out of that. Awesome. That's five diamond blocks that I can put into the build. So I guess we can just swap these blocks in here and... Yeah, beautiful. And I'm already out of diamond blocks. They don't go very far, do they? <laughs> Ooh, by the way, I forgot to mention that I added trapdoors just below our control panels here. And I have to say that I'm quite a fan of the movement that it adds to pressing these buttons now. It's actually quite satisfying. I think I need to add these to the rest of our mineshaft. The bottom layer of our smart mineshaft is particularly unfinished though. And it could definitely do with being decorated like how I did with the layers above. So let's fix that real quick, shall we? And welcome back everyone. That was just a quick time lapse, but now the diamond layer of the smart mineshaft is just as functional as the rest. And that's a pretty big milestone. I can actually use the entire mineshaft the way it was intended now. Now there is unfortunately lava down at the lava layer, and it was in the way of this small section in particular. But I think I was able to remove all of it, so hopefully we won't see everything burn down. Nope, never mind. I know I definitely put dark oak there. There must be lava here. Oh yeah, there it is, of course. Hopefully that was all of it though. Since this is the diamond layer though, I wanted to use a little bit of light blue glazed terracotta in the walls of our deposit box just here. And I wanted to see a hint of blue on the ceiling as well. So I'm currently holding up light blue concrete powder up there with string to stop it from falling back down. But I'm not actually done with the concrete powder just yet. The string is just to keep it there temporarily. What I actually want to do, you see, is to hold the powder up with skulk veins to signify that you are in the deepest and darkest part of the mineshaft. I don't actually know a skulk can hold up gravity blocks, but I'm really hoping it will. I don't have any skulk veins on hand though, so once again we're back in the deep dark. Since I plan on removing most of the skulk from the city at some point anyway, I may as well harvest the veins from here. It seems like it'll be easy enough for us to do. Do you know that whole idea that the Warden just lurks everywhere within the walls of the Deep Dark? 
Is he just silently watching me dig up his lawn right now? But can't come out to kill me because there's no shriekers nearby? And is incredibly frustrated with life because of it? And he just gets ever angrier with each vein that gets mined? Because that would be hilarious. <laughs> well, I think that'll be much more than enough for now. In fact, I think I've gone overboard. Just think of it as resources for the future. Now, I think if I just left click and then right click really fast, I'll be able to hold up the concrete powder with the skulk. Please tell me this works. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yes, it does. Fantastic. So this is what it's like to have skulk on light blue concrete powder. I think it works quite well, actually, since there's already hint of blue on the skulk in the first place. Oh, I guess there is a small chance of messing up. <laughs> Uh, but that's fine. It's not too hard to fix. Yeah, it turns out that I did have us way too many skull veins. But that's okay, because I can just send it up to our brand new storage building. So I've been thinking about the control panels for a few days, and I love what the trapdoors can add to the design here, but I don't think we have a good indicator of what floor we're on. I think if we change the iron blocks on the top there to the main material of the layer we are currently on, then that will serve as a good current floor indicator when you're looking at the control panel. Whereas right now, every layer could be seen as the iron layer, and I don't think that's a good design. I feel like I've accidentally already done this at the surface as well. The green terracotta could represent the green grass of the overworld. It might be a good idea to add some more trapdoors here too. That could be an idea. Oh yeah. Oh, I really should have done that. It certainly gives off a lot more energy for the build when you press a button. <laughs> so, since this is the coal layer, we can take out these iron blocks and replace with coal blocks. Copper and copper. Iron on... Oh, wait a second. Why did I just break the iron blocks on the iron layer? I think I just full on autopiloted myself just there. <laughs> lapis for lapis. Gold requires gold. And then this is where I'd put my diamonds. If I had any... No, no, we can't have that. So this is going to be the first official use of the smart mineshaft the way it was intended. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, hang on. I want to think about this. I want this place to look neat and organized in the future. And that means good, consistent torch placement. Okay, how about this? We mine 20 blocks and then place a torch on the left-hand wall. Since mobs require light level 0 to spawn now, that should be enough to fully spawn proof the branch mine that I'm in. I think that's going to be the way to go. Hey, we have our first door. Deep slate redstone. Gold too? Gotta love the gold. And here we go everyone, we just found our first official diamond in the first official use in the first official branch mine of the smart mine shaft. Let's see how many we get. Wait, really? Only one diamond? Ugh, oh, the first official diamond ore cluster we get in the first official use in the first official branch mine of the smart mineshaft only has one diamond? You've got to be kidding me! Ooh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting to come across iron, but I guess there is actually a small chance of it generating down here. It looks like our inventory has become full though, so I think that's a good point to call our first official outing to get our first official diamonds in the first official use of the first official branch mine of the smart mineshaft complete! Try saying that five times faster. A good point to call our first official outing to get our first official diamonds in the first official use of our branch mine and the smart mine should complete. Was, did that even make sense? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> now I kind of want the space, so we'll dump our deep slate in the minecart for now, but we won't send it off just yet. I have something I want to do. I was wondering if it would be a good idea to record the statistics of each branch in the smart mine shaft, just for the purposes of writing down history for the world. I mean, data is indeed beautiful. So the first thing we'll put down is the number of various different ores that I obtained from this branch in particular. And I don't think we're going to count fortune, since that is heavily RNG based and distorts the idea of what you get. So we're going to be counting ores in particular, and if we fortune anything accidentally, we have to count it as the ore before we used fortune. So while we got lucky with fortune and got four diamonds out of the single ore that we mined, we were still unlucky and only came across one diamond ore. So that is what is going to be recorded. And the next thing to record is the date that I mined each branch. Since today is the 8th of January 2023, that's going to be what's written on the sign. Oh, <laughs> you know what? This is going to confuse my American viewers, isn't it? 
Well, tough. It's not my fault you guys used the wrong date system. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna need some glow squid ink for this. The signs are practically unreadable. I don't think I have any on hand though, sadly. I'll go and get some later. Okay, hopefully we get a bit luckier on our second branch here. Ah. Well, that's definitely a sign of some sort. Is it lucky or unlucky to come across silverfish? Ah, we have a cave. And it has diamonds. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, it's only the one. So, I think when it comes to caves, I'm going to include the ores that I might find in caves that I break into while digging the branch mine. And then they will be included with the statistics of the rest of the ores that I come across. Yes! More diamonds! Two clusters, in fact. This branch is already much luckier than the last one. <laughs> yeah, we got a decent amount of diamonds just there. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, we have more! How many do we have? Oh, we had a sneaky one trying to hide just there. Oh, and another one! Looks like we've got some cave diamonds too. We've got really lucky on this one compared to the last branch. We found 17 diamond ores. That's amazing. And our inventory hasn't quite managed to fill up yet. And we have even more. I suspect that these will be the last though. Our inventory is now full. I am wondering though, how long is this branch compared to the other one? Oh really? So we actually got loads more diamonds despite the other branch being longer. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how that works out sometimes? So we were able to gather 21 diamonds, 3 iron, 6 gold and 13 redstone ores in that one. And we also came across a small amount of lapis. Oh? Is this what I think it is? Guys, I think we've just mined into an iron ore vein here. That's an incredible find. I don't think we'll mine the whole thing because, well, that could take forever. And I'm mainly focused on diamonds right now. But I can record the location of this and come back if I ever want a lot of raw blocks or the ores or whatever. Wow. Even more diamonds. I swear. I better have enough for six diamond blocks after all of this. <laughs> so if we ever come across a giant ore vein in our branch mine, we will simply state that there is one for that branch in particular. We'll also put the coordinates down as well so we know how far down it is. This one's actually pretty close too. I've just grabbed some glowing sacks from my base, so hopefully these signs will be a lot more readable now. I decided to mine out each branch until my inventory was completely filled up. So we've actually gained quite a lot of resources just here. I'm sure some of you are wondering just what we happen to find in each one. So I'll just give a quick glance and you can pause the video to see if you want to. I have to say though, that we actually did really well on the diamond front. Some of the branches only got a few, but then others got loads. I think it's really interesting to see the major differences here. I do wonder if there's a better way of recording the statistics though, as the signs do feel a bit noisy here. I think I heard that glowing causes additional lag as well, so it might be worth looking into alternative solutions. I don't know, I'll think about our options. Feel free to give a suggestion on a way to record everything though, as I would love to have a good lag-free solution if we're going to be doing this with every tunnel. Now, how many total diamonds did we get? 26? Oh, I forgot, it filled out the filter again. Well, here's to hoping that 26 is enough for six diamond blocks. I've got four in this chest as well, so that should hopefully give us a little bit of leeway. Right, let's just see how this goes and place them all down and then mine them all back up again. Please be 54. Please, give me at least 54. That's all I need for six diamond blocks. Please, come on. Okay. How many have we got? 54! Oh, that's actually the perfect amount. Awesome. There we go. Six diamond blocks. And this is where I'd put my diamond blocks. Now that I have them. Ah. Beautiful. I think I can say the control panels are finished now. I love how satisfying it is to push the buttons too. It's like a little race. <laughs> I have to push all of the buttons before the trapdoors flop back up again. I love it. <laughs> I've also gotten into the habit of harvesting the crystals from this amethyst geode on the gold layer. I think it's great that I've been able to incorporate this into the smart mineshaft. I'm sure there are others nearby too. 
but I haven't found them yet. For now though, this is a really good source of crystals. And once the harvest is done, I can just dump them into our storage system as well. Oh, I love the design of this place. I think we need to do more redstone projects in the future, because it's genuinely a lot of fun and also a good brain teaser trying to get everything to work together in the proper way. As confusing as it can get sometimes, I actually really enjoy it. I'd love to add more random little redstone-y things to the smart mineshaft in particular as well, but I'd have to work out what. This is actually functionally complete now. Everything from now on, it's just a side quest to make it better. I think that's enough work on the Smart Mineshaft 1 episode though. So I think it's time to work on the nether. We have one massive nether fortress to remove from the perimeter, and we need TNT to help us out. I think a shulker will probably be a good amount, so we're going to need four shulkers of sand. So if that being the case, we should probably start that time lapse. Let's dig. I interrupt this program to announce that due to unforeseen circumstances, the footage collected by the replay mod for this time lapse is unfortunately corrupted. Whistler doesn't know it yet, but he is very annoyed because of this. The cause will be revealed very soon. I hope you enjoyed that short time lapse. Not only have we filled up our four shulker boxes entirely with sand, but we also filled the remainder of our inventory as well, for good measure. So I should be able to craft well over a full shulker of TNT here, which is brilliant. And there we go. We now have one very full TNT box. A little bit of spare TNT, and my shulker boxes are empty again. I guess they can go back into my shulker chest then. Which is very lacking in shulker boxes currently. I might need to reclaim some from the smart mineshaft at some point. Or build a shulker farm. That is something I hope to build in this world at some point after all. My tools are completely wrecked right now though. So wrecked in fact, that I totally broke my netherite shovel during that time lapse, which is so annoying. <laughs> I think I had that one for ages as well. Rest in peace to the trowel. Rest in peace. Oh gosh no. No, that is not a good place to freeze. Not while I'm in the middle of landing. I've pressed the escape button. Hopefully the menu will pop up before something bad happens. Oh, nope. Minecraft just crashed on me. Fun. So when it comes to crashes, I always get a little bit worried. I've just made a backup just in case, but it might be too late at this point. But there's always a question up in the air about what exactly got saved and what didn't. And has anything corrupted? I actually lost my second ever Minecraft world due to corruption from a crash. It was only like a week old at the time, but it absolutely sucked. And it was incredibly demotivating. So I've made a habit to always try to make regular backups just in case. And see, this is an interesting one. Minecraft crashed in the nether, but I've just loaded back into the creeper farm despite not logging out here. So it clearly hasn't saved properly. It's like I've been set back by five minutes to an autosave or something. But interestingly, it's like certain aspects haven't. The shulkers have gone. I have TNT, sand and gunpowder in my inventory. I wonder if the world saved, but my player data didn't and was reset to a previous autosave. That has actually happened once or twice before. I almost lost Alice my axolotl to that actually. I think I showed that in a previous episode. I can't remember which one. But I think I did. I uh, can't help but see that I don't have my TNT box though. It's gone. It's gone. I think Minecraft just ate my TNT box. That, that's quite weird. <laughs> I think I had my toolbox on me as well, but it looks like that's gone back into my ender chest, which is very lucky, I have to say. I've got so much netherite in there. My goodness, if I just lost that, I, I might have flipped a table. <laughs> Wait, are my statistics okay? The day count is where it should be, that's good. How about my statistics themselves? Oh, good. I don't think anything important got corrupted just there. Really, I think the only loss is my TNT box. That's actually really quite annoying. I was literally just about to use it, and I literally just made it. Ah. Oh. So here we are, back again at the desert. I uh, hope you enjoy that time lapse, everyone. Let's dig.
So here we go again, four shulkers and a full inventory of sand. Hopefully we actually get to use this box of TNT this time. <laughs> you know something that really sucks though? Because that crash deleted my TNT box somehow, my netherite shovel, the trowel, died literally for no reason. My goodness, that is such a sad way to go out. At least this sounds pretty cool though, right? <laughs> have an idea to improve our frog light farm here. The reason why I have all of these frogs on honey blocks is because it helps to reduce lag and stops the game trying to calculate a gazillion different jumping possibilities. But I wonder if the farm would speed up at all if I put one of each type of frog into the killing chamber with the magma cubes. Maybe I should do that anyway. It would certainly help even out the frogs on each side. A 69 doesn't really divide into two, so I should be able to just break this glass block Attach a couple of leads and bring them down to the end. And then it should be easier to let them, and only them, enter the killing chamber. Okay, we'll do the orange one first. Hopefully this just works without any hiccups. Okay. That actually went better than I expected. <laughs> we now have three frogs in the central chamber here. And they're still not really doing anything. Okay. I'm just going to chalk it up to frogs being a bit rubbish at eating magma cubes. They're in the same chamber, they'll do it eventually. They're just taking their sweet time and the whole deal. Oh dear. Maybe another area I can look to improve this farm is actually spawn proofing the surrounding area as well. Don't get me wrong, the perimeter is great, but this frog light farm is on the outskirts of it. It's in the range of the nether outside of the perimeter. I might need to place slabs or something on the outside to help improve the rates. But we have one final nether fortress to destroy. This is actually a really chunky one, so this might need more TNT than I actually have. That's okay though, I should be able to at least get rid of about 80% of it. And I'm fine with mining it down from there. So with that being the case, I hope you enjoy that time lapse everyone. The final, exclusively nether clearing time lapse. This is actually quite the milestone for our nether project here. Anyway, let's go. And welcome back everyone, I hope you all enjoyed that time lapse. The whole nether fortress has been completely removed. And do you know what that means? The nether hole is 100% spawn proof. And that is once again one hell of a milestone. There's literally no spawnable blocks left in the nether hole within a 200 block radius of 0, zero. I am safe whenever I come to the nether from now on. That's awesome. I will admit that things got a little bit sketchy every now and then though. Like this one time I started digging a hole into the fortress to place TNT and a wither skeleton followed me in. That wasn't fun. I also had some TNT get set off by the blazers which gave me a real sense of urgency to fire away as fast as I could a couple of times. But luckily for me that is now all in the past. Now you might be wondering what this crying obsidian block is and this block it's actually just to serve as a block to mark the centre of a crossroads for a potential wither skeleton farm in the future. And I needed to make it with something that wouldn't explode from the TNT. Oh, I can't wait to be able to just go right ahead and build the things that I've had in my mind for well over two years now. It's a dream come true. I hope you're all as excited about this as I am, because this has seriously been a long time coming. And the nether has changed so much to get to this state. And by the time it's finished, it'll be completely different once again. Oh, I really am going to love building here. Oh, I'm the human torch again. Whoops. I did have to mine a good portion of the last nether fortress myself though. And since I was doing so, I thought it would make sense to collect the blocks as well. I mean, who knows when I might want to build with nether bricks, right? And we've actually got quite a bit more on these shulkers as well. I'm literally drowning in nether bricks. Oh, by the way, I also found a chest in that fortress as well. It turns out that I hadn't actually looted the whole thing. And I found some diamond horse armor and a saddle, which is pretty lucky if I say so myself. Did you hear that nether chicken? I now have some diamond horse armor and a saddle. That means when you grow up to be a big bird, you can be my valiant steed and I can ride you. 
Wait, what do you mean that isn't how it works? Oh, by the way, I was able to get four Wither Skulls during the removal of that Nether Fortress. That means that with the two that I already had, we can summon the Wither another two times. We might actually have some more beacons in our world soon. Or maybe we'll end up using them for Golem Eyes again or something. I mean, you cannot deny. They do make for very beautiful eyes. So this has been quite the long episode, hasn't it? And yet we still aren't done. Last time I asked you all for names for the glow squids within our amethyst farm in the smart mineshaft. And I got quite a lot. I think part of that reason though is because one of you decided to suggest a bunch all at once. So, uh, thank you, I guess? They were good names regardless, though. So we're going to use them all anyway. So we've got Squillop, Squidward, Pearl, Hank, Blow and Go, Ben, and Cthulhu. Wait, who suggested Cthulhu? I didn't see that in the comment section. Oh, wait, no, that's because it was me. I'm the one suggesting that. <laughs> now I have a confession to make. These squids may die at some point, and that's unfortunate. While I know some of you are happy that your names made it into the squid tank, your squid may suffer an untimely death if it happens to swim in front of me when I try to mine an amethyst crystal. I know this because I've already whacked one or two of them with a pickaxe. So with that in mind, they're definitely on borrowed time. I apologise in advance. So here we are, you made it to the end of the episode. Hey, don't click off just yet. I have one last thing to say. I don't talk about real life much on YouTube as I prefer to keep it separate. But I just want to let you all know that I changed jobs recently. I left the last one with the awful 12 hour shifts that left me feeling like I was in a permanent state of exhaustion. And I am now in a much better place both physically and mentally because of it. For example, I have an actually good sleep schedule now. The new job is the typical Monday to Friday rather than just 3 to 4 days on alternate weeks. So I might well have less days off. But I feel like I have both the time and the ability to play Minecraft in the mornings and evenings again, which is amazing, really. So what does this mean for the channel? Well, I don't want to make any promises just yet. But it might mean that I get to make content more often. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But just know that I am really happy with where I am right now. And my outlook on life has genuinely improved because of it. I mean, I'm genuinely surprised that I lasted over a year at the other place. Because, wow, I felt like I was just a robot there. <laughs> just going through the exact same motions all day, every day, wondering if this is all there is to life. I think I was going a bit insane there, really. But every day so far at the new place is unique and interesting. It's engaging to the point that I don't even look at the time, wondering how far away the end of the working day is. It just sort of creeps up suddenly on me. And that left me thinking. That's when you know you've found somewhere good. Anyway, thanks for listening to my life update, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thanks for watching.